Dr. Phil is back with all new shows recorded before the stay-at-home order. Today, she spent over 100K and has gone bankrupt from her online relationships. Blatant scams. He says, I'm scamming you. Please forgive me. Can you still send me some gift cards? Multiple fiancés. You meet Fred Adler on a dating site. Three days later, you're engaged. But he disappears. Five days later, you're engaged to Paul. I thought Fred was deceased. So now you're engaged to Paul and to Fred, who you thought was dead, who reappeared. It's the strangest catfish story we've ever covered. Lois drove an hour to meet a stranger at a hotel. She says she gave him $9,000 in cash in exchange for a suitcase. And what was inside the suitcase? Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. the past 18 seasons, I've done a lot of what we call catfish shows. That's where someone is defrauding someone, trying to get their money. They steal an identity, pretend to be that person, and then start getting money from people. When my guest today, Candace, emailed me, I thought, wow, this could be a first. Candace says she has been so determined to prove to her mom, Lois, that she's being scammed that in the past, she herself created a fake identity to catfish her mom's alleged catfish. Now, Candace's aunt, Lou Ann, says she has also tried to intervene, but despite her efforts, she says her older sister, Lois, ended her 37-year marriage and wiped out her entire retirement account for online love. Now, Lois says she's here today to get me to help her, too but for a reason that her daughter Candace and her younger sister Luann might be surprised to learn. Before we hear from Lois, here's what Candace and Luann have to say. Take a look at this. My mom has become addicted to online romance scams. My sister Lois and her husband were married 37 years. Recently, they divorced. She had never been on social media, and at first I thought, oh, how cute, my mom's getting with the times. Boy, was I wrong. Over the past couple of years, it's just been one online scam after another. One of my mom's first loves was a general who was serving in Afghanistan. Apparently, the Afghanistan government was so grateful to the general for his service that they rewarded him with a suitcase full of gold, diamonds, and cash in which he was going to send to my mother for safekeeping. The general told my sister that he loved her and he wanted to marry her. My sister was opening credit cards so that she could send the general money. I knew this was a total scam and I wanted to prove it to my mom. What I did was create a fake profile and I started to catfish the general himself. I spoke to the general for about two to three weeks and he's told my mother and I some of the exact same stories and some of the exact same pictures. At first my mom believed that the general was a fake but within a few days she was back to falling for his lies. Then there was a gentleman by the name of Fred Adler. Lois started taking payday loans so she could help Fred get out of Africa. Sure enough, like clockwork, Fred ended up missing his plane and the government refused to buy him a ticket back, so he was on his own. I called Fred and I told Fred I would pay for his flight for the next day and he told me he had business to still take care of and then he hung up on me. Last I knew, Fred was wandering the streets aimlessly in New York because he could not find a Bank of America. As of a few weeks ago, my mom's most recent guy is a gentleman by the name of Paul. Lois told me that he was in Africa collecting his uncle's inheritance. I said to my sister, and once again, this is a scam. She says, no, she knows it's real. At this point, she is completely destitute and has nothing left. My sister has nothing to her name but a card table and a mattress. I really hope that Dr. Phil can get through to my mother because if not, I feel like this is our last chance. Well, I'm glad you're here. I wish you'd come a long time ago, but she wouldn't. Correct. I mean, you tried, and yes. she wouldn't do it. Correct. Uh, so I, I get that. And listen, I, I really want to get this done with her. And understand, I take no pleasure whatsoever in crushing somebody's dream and fantasy. This is, I, I hate 
that she's going to have to face this reality because it's devastating, right? Correct, yes. She, it, you, you mourn the loss even if a fictional lover, because it's real to her. Mm -hmm. And so she, she will face that loss and then she will realize, oh my God, I've lost all of this money. And Candace, you say that she's lost a hundred thousand dollars i yes i think it's somewhere around that, that range she's, maybe even more yeah it's a little more actually i think when we do the close math but it's about a hundred thousand bucks yes uh and a 37 year old marriage to your father that's correct yes sir so that's what i mean when this hits her obviously it's very difficult and we have to be very compassionate about that this is not funny it's not a joke to me it's it's something that i take seriously because it's going to hurt her a lot and i want to be you're going to have to support her through this and, and, and take care of her. Now, you say she's not just getting catfish. She's addicted to this because, I mean, I've looked through it, and there's like Fred Adler, Dr. Morris, uh, Paul. The, did the general have a name other than the general, or is his first name the and his last name general? No, he actually catfished like a real retired Air Force general. Yeah, but she so. just refers to him as the general. Yes, that's what he requested she refer to him as. <laughs> as the general, okay? Uh, is this a surprise to you that she, I mean, you grew up with her. Yes. You, you've known her longer than you, of course, because you right. grew up with her. Is it a surprise to you that she's this into this? My sister has changed 100%. She's not the same person I grew up with. Um, we were sheltered in our life, um, went to Christian school, um, very religious background, wore dresses, Care up. So this is not her. So you were very sheltered and not, she wasn't savvy in computers and social media and all that. Not at all. And when she first like got on Facebook, you kind of thought, well, this is cute. Yeah, yeah, it happened like shortly after my daughter was born and yeah. yeah I well, yeah, it was look at her. Yeah. She's hitting the buttons. Right, right. Okay. She did the creepy little wave thing to me through Messenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, now you made some efforts to disprove that the general was real. So in August of 18, you call New York Customs because her thing was he had luggage. Correct. And this luggage was full of Thank diamonds and gold, right? Yes, yes. And because everybody goes around with suitcases full of diamonds and gold. Right. And he just needed help getting it here. And when he got it here, then it was hers, right? They were going to live with this and be rich and go off into the sunset. Right. But he had to have money to get it. Of course, right? yes. Okay, so you decide to check on this. So you call New York Customs mm -hmm. to find out about this luggage. There's no luggage there, of right. course. Right, right. Uh, and then September 18, you start catfishing the general. Correct. You make up a, you make up a profile and you start flirting with him. Yes, sir. And emails him as Sarah Stevens. Now, Lois believes Kansas just cloned the general's email and started saying things back so you could fake that he was interacting right. with you and didn't believe that he really was. So he, Candace stops talking to Lois for a few months because she thought you were just tricking her, right? Yes, yeah, she thought it was either my father or I that yeah, was felt pretending. Betrayed. Yes. January 2019, uh, you find and messages the real dad of the children whose photo was stolen, right? Correct, yes. So this general had stolen somebody's pictures and were using them as own. You found the real guy. Yes, he had sent me pictures of, when I was Sarah Stevens, he had a son with me. And he sent right. me pictures of his son, but he also sent me pictures of his daughter. And I managed to see that there was like a JPEG attached to that, what the name was. I looked him up on Facebook and I recognized the ge the gentleman that was in the reflection mm -hmm. in the mirror behind this little girl. And Would so, you like a job? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. And so yeah. I ended up, we actually three-way called him and we spoke to him and he was and able to tell who her. Who three-way called him? My mother and I three-way called the gentleman who had had his family's pictures stolen. And, okay, so yes. the three of you, your mother, you, call the real person in the picture. Correct. That has had his identity stolen by this person that's telling her 
He's the general. No, we called the gentleman who, whose children had, had their images stolen off okay. of his Facebook. And All so right. we'd let him know, like, you should probably set your stuff to private. Somebody's using your children's information to take okay. advantage of women. All right. And so your mother then confronts the general. Yeah, I, I'm sure she did, yes. Yeah. And uh, says that he's lying. What happened? Um, somehow my mom, this general, made my mom believe that this gentleman somehow cloned all of these images off of his, I don't know. I don't know how my mom honestly makes sense of this in her head because to me it, it doesn't make sense. But okay. somehow she, yeah, believes them every time. Yeah, so he just conned her and said, that's all a lie. Right. I'm the real guy. Yes, that's correct. And she believed it. Yes. We continued on and we found the real guy. Okay. We found the person in the picture. He is a major general, and he doesn't want his picture used, which I completely sure. understand. I actually found out his wife's phone number, and I have texted his wife, and I've shared those texts with his with my mother. Uh -huh. I also located his children's Instagram accounts and showed her pictures of him with his children on vacation while the guy she's talking to is supposedly in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So He's starting to panic. Because he's losing his cash cow. He obviously uses the same tactics on my mother. They make you feel guilty for even questioning them. I confuse now. Mm -hmm. I confuse uh, too. And later, they have people send them gift cards. So you've been sending gift cards. That was too general. Thousand dollars, thousand dollars. I'm holding a lot of money here. You start to talk to the general yourself, right? As myself? Yeah. No, no I as Sarah. Not. Oh, yes, as Sarah. That's correct. Okay, this is when you start to talk to him yourself. So, to Lois, good morning, my darling wife. Happy Sunday to you, honey. Sorry I missed chatting with you yesterday. How are you doing today? Then to Sarah, which is your alter ego. Correct. Honey, how are you today? May your day with filled with lots of joy, love, happiness, and wonderful moments. Now, this is interesting that the picture is the same mm -hmm. that he sends to the both of you. Uh, enjoy your day, happy Sunday, today is a gift from God. Enjoy your day, happy Sunday, today is a gift from God. Sends you both exactly the same thing. Yes. Um, did you show this to her? Yeah, and not only did I show, after I'd been speaking to him for several weeks, I decided to finally confront my mom with the information because I thought there would be no way she could deny it. It was to the same email address she was emailing, the same picture. She ended up admitting to me, he told me his favorite meal was Salisbury steak. She said that he told her the same thing. And then also he had asked me to send money to his son. My mom had sent money to that same exact person, address, name, everything. So what'd she say? I mean, when I confronted her with it, she always believes it. She looks like she's just devastated. She's going to be sick to her stomach. She's just very emotional. But when I called her the next day, I told her she could not talk to him. She shouldn't because he would just try to convince her that it was all fake. Well, sure enough, she talked to him the next day, and she was like, mm, I don't know. Maybe he's real. Maybe he's not. And by the second day, she believes that he is who he says he is. And Okay. So you, as Sarah, mm -hmm. confront the general. Yes. Okay, and here's what you said, uh, as Sarah. Correct. Uh, General, I got Lois's phone number and Catherine, fake daughter, mm -hmm. uh, wants me to call her. Uh, the General, I don't know what you mean, who's Lois? Well, Sarah, this is very serious. The General, Sarah, you are saying things I don't know. Sarah, your email is, and we blurred it, just like your email is, Blah, blah. General, I don't even know who that is. I'm confused now. <laughs> Something is not right here. You haven't say anything that I know. What's your problem? So this guy, he's starting to panic. Yeah, because well, he's like losing he, his cash cow. He obviously uses the same tactics on my mother. They make you feel guilty for even questioning them. Yeah. So yes. I confuse now. Mm-hmm. I confuse uh, too. <laughs> yeah, and he's supposedly from where? Uh, oh, oh, he lives in Alaska. He has an orphanage with 89 children yes. in it. Yeah. 
promised her mansions and yeah, it was and, like a 32 bedroom yeah. home mansion, 18 baths, 16 kitchens in Alaska. Yeah, big 16 kitchens. 16 kitchens. 16 kitchens. I said, does he live in a like it, an apartment complex? Yeah, <laughs> he's just a big eater. Yeah, yes, apparently. Well, you got to have a place for all those orphans to yeah. go and hang out. So. Well, Lois came to L.A. for one reason and for one reason only. You're going to find out why when we meet her, and it is not what you think. We'll be right back. About two weeks ago, I met a wonderful man named Paul Shaw. Paul is currently in Nigeria taking care of his uncle's estate. He's trying to get his settlement right now. It was over $2.5 million. At the moment, Paul needs $2,300 so he can get home. Paul and I are engaged, and I feel like I'm not being scammed by him. He has been honestly truthful to me. And later... He has $800,000 a month and that you've given away all of your money. I feel like if somebody truly loved you, the last thing they would do is put you in that kind of a situation. I would say that my mother is very gullible and naive. We grew up in a very conservative Christian household. We lived a very sheltered life. Within a matter of days of meeting a new man online, she shares her entire life story, including photos and her address and her phone number. I've told my mom at least 100 times that she's not only putting herself in danger, but her family. I'm afraid something bad will happen to her. I feel like I am the mother, and she acts like a teenager who knows nothing about the world and the way it works, but yet she thinks she knows it all. Lois' sister Luann and her daughter Candace say they are 100% convinced that Lois is being scammed by various men she meets online. Now, Candace says even though she has proven some of the men as fakes, her mother just says, well, I don't believe it, and continues to communicate with them. It's something called confirmation bias. When you're in confirmation bias, you're only seeking out information that supports one's belief while ignoring evidence that contradicts. And in fact, when you get contradictory information, it just deepens your belief even more. They just hunker down and hang on even tighter because they're under attack. Now, Lois admits that she has gone bankrupt from her online relationships, but is currently engaged, thankfully, to a good, honest man. One of the first people that I met was the general. I fell in love with him. He served in the military and he needed help getting his luggage back to the United States. The luggage is filled with gold, money, and jewelry, and he's still trying to get it here to me. I paid approximately $70,000 to get his luggage. I am still trying to get the luggage. The delivery driver wants 2,500 to deliver the luggage. About five months ago, I met Fred Adler. Fred is an honest guy that I felt like would have made me a good soulmate. His son goes to school in Australia and his wife passed away. Fred finally made it to New York. I would call and I would text and I never got a response from Fred. I thought that Fred died on the streets of New York City. My nickname was Strawberry. <laughs> Sorry. I named him Chocolate. I'm sorry I saved his life. I felt like from Africa. About two weeks ago, I met a wonderful man named Paul Shaw. Paul is a clean-cut guy, and I feel like he is a very honest man. Paul is exactly what I'm looking for. Paul has a daughter named Angela. She's 24 years old, and she does go to a university in Scotland. Paul is currently in Nigeria taking care of his uncle's estate. He's trying to get his settlement right now. It was over $2.5 million. At the moment, Paul needs $2,300 so he can get home. I love Paul. Paul and I are engaged, and as soon as he gets back, we're planning on getting married and buying a house together. When it comes to my fiancé, Paul, I feel like I'm not being scammed by him. He has been honestly truthful to me. My daughter, Candace, and my sister are upset. Every time I talk to somebody online, they think it's a scam. I feel like they need to stay out of my business, really. I would love it if Dr. Phil would bring Paul home to me. Yes, I would. <laughs>
<laughs> I've had nothing but bad luck. Everybody else I haven't seen yet. <laughs> well, it's good to meet you. Glad to meet you, too, also. I'm here to uh, prove to them, my daughter and my sister, that they need to accept that I have not been scammed. Okay. Um, and then I have a, a true relationship in my life now, I feel like. And it's with who? With Paul. Okay. Why is he different from the others? Like, you, you had a relationship with Dr. Morris, and he even confessed that he scammed you. Yes, he did. He was, he, I thought he was a white guy I had met on Facebook, and he ended up to be a black guy. And okay, he admitted he, it to me. But he told you he did, right? Yes, he did. He, he admitted said, I'm, to I'm scamming you. Yes, he did. Okay, so he look, I'm scamming you. And, he told and don't me. send any money to Fred either. Because <laughs> Fred's scamming you too. I had rescued Fred from Africa. That's what I really need help with because he didn't make his flight. And, and he needs uh, her to send him more money. Surprise! You're engaged now. I with Paul, yes. Yes, Paul. I'm engaged with Paul. Mm -hmm. Did did Dr. Morris say anything to you about Paul? No, uh -uh. I never told him about Paul. Did no. he talk to you about Fred? Um I have talked to him about Fred, yes. What did he say to you about Fred? Well he he uh, was supposed to see me in December, and he didn't show up. And finally, I, then he finally admitted that he was uh, a scam in me. So I, Who? I no longer. Who admitted that? Uh, doc, uh, the, why, the guy that pertained to be Dr. Morse. Okay, but didn't he also tell you you're also getting scammed by somebody else? Um, yes, he told me not to um, to send money to Fred. Yes, he told yeah. me I was being scammed by Fred. Okay, yes. so he said, look, I'm scamming you. And, he told and don't me. send any money to Fred either. Because <laughs> right. Fred's scamming you too. Yes, he told me that too. <laughs> so how did he even know about him? I had mentioned uh, to him about Fred that Fred mm -hmm. is an honest man. I always, I still believe that too. Yeah, so. but I, and I do need help with Fred. <laughs> Okay, well, here's the exchange with Dr. Morris. Uh, he apologizes to you. He says, I'm so sorry to hurt you, okay? Find a place in your heart to forgive me. And you say, yes, I will. Um, have you ever been married? You, you say, he's, he says, I'm scamming you. Please forgive me. And you say, okay, have you ever been married? And he says, no. Just go, you don't deserve me. And you say, you are a good person. There is someone out there for you, bye. Thanks for being honest. And Morris says, but take my words, if Fred asks you for money, don't send him, okay? Uh, He's a scam too. Right. And you say, okay, best of luck in finding you a sweetheart, bye. Dr. Morris, can you do me one favor? Can you get me the gift card? <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> he says he's scamming you, and you say, no, Dr. Morris, uh, please help out. Uh, and Lois, you say, well, that is okay. I have a fiance. I'm going to get married soon. Now, this is a guy that is, he says, look, I'm scamming you. Can you still send me some gift cards? Well, I didn't send him any more. <laughs> no, I haven't. Not after I realized his that he admitted who he was. No, I haven't. And he told I you this other guy's a scammer, too. Do you know why he said that? Because he's probably sitting three cubicles down mm -hmm. in a workroom in Nigeria. Oh, well, you're talking about Fred? No, Fred has Fred actually had, I had rescued Fred from Africa. And that's what I really need help with you, because he didn't make his flight come in Monday. And, and he needs uh, her to send him more money. Yes. Surprise. He you know, money he, for a had, he had um, the deal with him is that um, he was counting on me to get him to the airport, and he missed his flight. Okay, and your 
in the United States, the middle of the United States, he's in Africa. Right. And he's counting on you to get him to the airport. <laughs> Who's going to button up his shirt? Wait, what, what the hell? Are you, I don't know. I, I mean, just... commonsensically, commonsensically, does that make sense to you? Here's a guy that's in Africa, and he's so incompetent that he needs some lady in the middle of the United States to get him to the airport in Africa. Right. I don't know. I feel sorry for him. I just, I, I still feel bad about him because I know hey, he nearly lost his life over there the first time. Yeah, I hate when that and, happens. Uh, Here's what he said. <laughs> this, this is his, he said, Fred talking to you, he says, I told you to send me $200. If I miss my flight, you're going to be to blame. You said, you broke me before. I'm not obligated to help you. You need to think things out. Fred, it's your stubbornness that is causing this issue. Lois, I can't believe you would miss your flight because it is so expensive. Fred, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Lois, so what are you going to do? Fred, well, I'm blaming you for everything. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna blame you for everything. Right, he did. I that's what happened how, Monday. Like, a good, honest person blames you for their stuff. Can I also just add that he was stuck in Africa in September. My mom called everybody she knew begging for like $5,000 to get him back, including yes. my mother-in-law, and said that he would pay her back double because, of course, these guys always promise to pay you back double every single time. And then somehow, all of a sudden, like what, last week he calls you and he tells you he's coming back to Oklahoma and he'll be flying in on Monday? As soon as I heard that, I knew something's gonna happen. He's gonna need money. I wasn't surprised Monday when you were upset. I knew he had called you and told you something happened at the airport. How is it that this guy has $800,000 in a bank account that he finally got to, obviously somehow, to get back to Africa from New York City? but yet he needs you to send him $200. He has $800,000, Mom. He knows what your situation is and that you've given away all of your money, every bit of it, but yet he still needs money from you. I feel like if somebody truly loved you, the last thing they would do is put you in that kind of a situation. That's right. I felt bad asking a friend of mine that has been a client for seven years to borrow their luggage to get here, let alone asking somebody that, I mean, somebody for such substantial amounts of money. That's. That's insanity. You know, I'd like to get Fred home so I can get my money back that he's promised me. But they always promise you. The general I know, promised he, you I too. I feel like Fred is an honest person. But okay, why well, do you okay, feel that way? Hang on. Way? I'm sorry. You, you've, you came here for me to talk to her, I know, right? I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. So if you want to talk to her, I'll just go back across the street. Okay. <laughs> All right. I apologize. I mean, well, you've already done this, right? Yes, yeah. on many occasions. I'm sorry, it's just very frustrating. No, well, it's okay, but if you want to do this, you don't need me for this. Okay, fair. You meet Fred Adler on a dating site on August 28th. Three days later, you're engaged. I don't know what to tell you. I'm really lonely. I I'm curious. Fred Adler... Uh, Dr. Morris, Paul, you, I mean, I could just go down the list. Not one of them has ever shown up. Now, uh, come on, but before you talk, let, look, let's just be commonsensical, okay? This, don't, I, I'm not asking you to agree to anything. I'm just commonsensical. Does it cause you concern that you keep getting in relationships that ask for money and never show up. Yes. When you look at just those facts, forget everything else, forget being in love, forget Africa, forget everything. Just, if all you know is you talk to somebody online and almost immediately they ask for money so they can get to you and never show up. If that's all you know, does that cause you concern, if a friend was telling you that? Well, I feel like Fred will show up. No, and that's I know not Paul. what I ask you. Okay. Now, listen, you have to at least play my game. Right. You have to at least have a, you have to play a logic gymnastic with me here. If all you know is that someone has met four or five people and every one of them asks for money almost immediately in order to come to you, 
and none of them ever showed up, does that cause you concern? Yes, it does. But I, okay. I feel oh. like I'm going to have someone show up for me soon. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you, you, that's a run-on sentence. <laughs> I'm just asking you, because you're not, you have to be your own best friend here. Right. If you had a best friend that would say, I've sent five people money to come be with me. Number one didn't show up, number two didn't show up, number three didn't show up, number four didn't show up, number five didn't show up. I've run through $100,000, but I think number six is going to show up. What would you say to her? I don't know. I really, honestly, I think I got hope with Paul. You're not, (laughs) listen, you're not, you're not, you're not being logical with me. I'm not asking you about you. I'm asking you what you would say to a friend. What would I say to a friend? I if would... all you knew was she had met five people, they all asked for money right away to, so they could get to her, and not one of them showed up. I probably would tell them to be more cautious about who they meet online. And let's see how cautious you've Basically. been. Because let's take this down for a second. Let's look at the timeline here. You joined Facebook in March of 18. Then June of 18, you meet the general through Facebook. Then March of 19, your husband files for divorce. It's, It's finalized in June. And then you meet Fred Adler on a dating site on August 28th, right? Yes, Rona. Okay. Three days later, you're engaged. Three days later, you're engaged. Right. I I don't know what to tell you. I really want to somebody promising me my life. I'm really lonely. Okay, three days later, but let's just stay with this. Three days later, you're engaged. Okay. Then, six weeks later, he disappears. So, you meet Dr. Morris on the next day after he disappears. You were engaged to him. And he disappears on the 22nd, and on the 23rd, you just switch to Morris. Right. He's gone. You were engaged, but he disappears, so you switch to Morris. Well, okay? I thought Fred was deceased, actually. Well, you mourned him for life. what, 12 hours? No. So now you're engaged to Paul and to Fred, who you thought was dead, who reappeared. So now you're engaged to Fred and Paul? Then, October 28th, you post that Dr. Morris is your fiance. That's five days. You, you met him the day after the other one disappears, and five days later, you're engaged to this guy. It was, you met the other one for three days and engaged to him. Then he disappears. You know this guy five days, and you're engaged to him. Because you thought the other guy was dead. Right. But then he comes back from the dead. <laughs> he reappears. Right. He... But now you're engaged to him. Yeah, he was a fake. <laughs> Dr. Huh? Dr. Morris was a fake. Okay, but you were engaged to him. Now, does that tell you that, hey, maybe I'm not being diligent enough because I was engaged to this guy after five days and he was a phony. So maybe my due diligence is lacking. But this guy that you knew for three days before you were engaged to him reappears, but then a month later he disappears again. Okay? Then you date a man from church, a real man, somebody you can touch. Right. Okay? (laughs) But that lasts just a week. Yes. And so that falls apart. Right. Okay? Then January 5th you meet Paul. Right. Around, yes. Five days later, you're engaged to Paul. Five days. Three days, you were engaged. Five days, you were engaged. Now another five days, you're engaged again. Then, Fred reappears. This is like whack-a-mole. He just keeps (laughs) popping up. He's gone, he's back, he's gone, he's back, he's gone, he's back. But now Dr. Morris admits to scamming you. So you've been 
engaged three times, three days you knew somebody, five days you knew somebody, five days you know somebody, then this guy admits he's scamming you, then this guy appears and you've been engaged to him, so now you're engaged to Paul and to Fred, who you thought was dead, who reappeared. So now you're engaged to Fred and Paul? No, uh -uh. no, I'd, I'd drop Paul, Fred, but he knows that. That so, I would like to have him come back over here so I can get my money from him. So you get your money back? Yes. How much did you give him? Uh, it was probably, um, I'm guessing maybe close to 7000 but he said he paid me $8,000. The general was 96900 and And one of the things that these scammers do to avoid some of the, uh, some of the laws and some of the problems is they have people now send them gift cards. And so you've been sending gift cards, right? That was to... Uh... That was too general. Yeah, thousand dollars, thousand dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars. I mean, there's. I'm holding a lot of money here. This this right here is between four and five thousand dollars. I I'm guessing. I don't know. I've never added them up. It's forty three hundred dollars exactly. Oh really? And you've yet to meet a single person in person. Candace says just last March, her mom Lois drove an hour to meet a stranger at a hotel. She says she gave him $9,000 in cash in exchange for a suitcase. We're gonna find out exactly what that was uh, because it's a little fuzzy, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Well, we're out of time today, but it's pretty clear that I have a lot more investigating to do. Trust me, you don't want to miss tomorrow's episode when we finally, finally open Lois's safe. Also, we found this man, the man in this photo of Fred Adler. Now find out what he tells Lois when they meet face to face as we continue to uncover the truth behind Lois's online relationships. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil, she met a stranger in a hotel room to exchange $9,000 in cash for a suitcase filled with diamonds and gold from her online lover. But instead he brought me white cash. So these are $100 bills that have been treated in some way, right? Yes, you have to put a solution to take them $100 bills. Was she scammed? You take this and duck it in there. Again? That's tomorrow. I'd like to thank all of my guests today. For more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Every day and night, that's right Ooh, you know